Okay. Hi, I'm Bruno Castro-Cardi from Cosmos Cluster 4. And uh, my project focuses on implementing biometrics in keystroke logging to create a kind of keylogger that can effectively identify individuals based on their typing path. So uh, biometrics is a really big field, and it's rapidly increasing, which is kind of shown by the number of projects we have that focus on biometrics today. So uh, because Khan gave a really great overview of biometrics uh, already, I don't have to go into that too much. Um, but something really similar to keystroke dynamics, which has to do with the typing pattern, which is what this keylogger would use to identify users, uh, gate recognition. So you might think that they're really different at first, but uh, they have some similarities. So gate recognition basically works by taking some basic features of an individual, like the height or uh, the bounce as they, the bounce of their stride as they go up and down, and uh, it combines that with more complex features. So for instance, most gate recognition, most gate recognition software uses uh, cameras to analyze the silhouette of an individual as he or she walks. Uh, this could be like a frontal silhouette or uh, a side view, it uh, doesn't matter. And it breaks, it breaks their body parts up into ellipses, as you can see in the picture. And it kind of uses these to create a unique profile for each in individual. And so based on that profile, uh, it can match the user's uh, gate to a profile stored in the database to identify the user. So um, keystroke dynamics would work pretty similarly. It takes some basic things like typing speed and um, uh, maybe word frequency, and it combines that with more uh, complex things like uh, common typos or maybe the frequency or the amount of time in between different character presses. Like, uh, for instance, in between A and S, you might have a different time between someone else. Or also the frequency of using special keys like Control Alt, whether you use the left shift key or the right shift key, you can like there are tons of possibilities for what you can use, and all of these would help to create a really unique picture for each individual, which would help its high accuracy. Um, so that kind of brings me to keystroke logging. Anand also had a really good presentation on keystroke logging, so you guys have. A, I mean, also we are the computer security cluster, so I'm sure you guys all know pretty well. Uh, they just log keystrokes. Um, but uh, something really interesting about keystroke logging is that a lot of more advanced uh, key loggers use something called timestamps. So they actually record the time at which an individual key is pressed. So you can use that for something like keystroke dynamics. So you can determine this key was pressed at this time, uh, this other key was pressed at this time, you can measure the time in between them. You can keep doing things like that. So timestamps are really useful. Also, uh, a really important thing about keystroke logging is if it's not just saving to a file on the computer for like another user to read, it's it's phoning home. So it's sending it's sending information of all the keystrokes back to the attacker or the person that installs the keylogger in the first place. So this is one of the ways that more advanced keylogger detection uh, programs look for to detect a keylogger. So. Um, they will look at your network traffic, and if they can find something that looks like a call home sending data of like keystrokes or something, then that that's an indication that there's a keylogger. So uh, another way is, like Anand said, to analyze processes on your computer for something like a keyboard. Um, another really interesting problem with keystroke logging that's also a problem for um, keystroke dynamics and identifying a user is the issue of different keyboard layouts. So we're in the US, so I'm pretty sure all of you probably use the QWERTY layout, which is just the regular layout on the computer keyboard, named for the uh, orientation of keys, Q, W, E, R, T, Y. Um, but there are other keyboard layouts. So um, for, uh, at the most basic level, it's like different countries. They clearly don't use the same keyboard as the United States because they couldn't really type in that language. So. Um, Keyloggers would uh, get like different keys for those countries. Um, but take something like the Dvorak keyboard layout, which was um, designed to increase typing speed and efficiency. All the most common letters pressed are in the home row, so and all the vowels are on the left side, and most common consonants on the right, so you can alternate vowel, consonant, vowel, consonant. So this really increases typing speed and efficiency, and it minimizes typos. However, a lot of people don't know about it, and they don't use it. But it poses a, pro poses a problem to keyloggers, because if, for instance, I were to type a setting in and my computer was in the Dvorak layout, the keylogger would record it as though it's still in QWERTY. So if I wanted to type um, whatever test phrase, 
it would return a bunch of gibberish. So key loggers have to be able to detect different keyboard layouts, especially if you're using them in like a different country or you want them to be in multiple countries. So they have to detect which keyboard layout it's in, um, stuff like that. Also, um, clearly with the Dvorak keyboard, you'll have a different typing pattern. So uh, your frequency, uh, the, the space between different key presses, the time between different key presses would be a lot different. So uh, you'd probably have less typos and things like that. But the important thing is consistency. So if so, it'd be really hard for a keylogger like this that looks at keystroke dynamics to identify users. It would be really hard if the first data it collected on a user was when they were typing in the QWERTY layout, and then they switched to the Dvorak layout. It would look like a completely different user. So that's a really tough problem that hasn't been solved. Uh, in fact, using using uh, biometrics and keystroke logging, like keystroke dynamics, is really uncommon. It's it's getting developed like really currently, it hasn't been used very much. Uh, one of its uses, uh, it, uh, this group of research students, they used it as another factor of authentication. So individual users with a computer, they would record their typing pattern, and then as they were typing, the computer would be checking that. And if the typing pattern of while they were logged on and stuff matched what their usual typing pattern was, they were authenticated and it was all good. But if, for instance, their typing pattern differed and they had a different typing pattern than what it normally was, then they would be flagged as an intruder or something, or somebody that wasn't allowed access to that system, and they would be booted off or something. So um, government and private sectors would also have uses for that, not just individual users. So the government could um, maybe, if they were able to obtain the typing pattern of, say, known criminals or cyber villains, then they could use that. They could have all these, like, this big array of infected systems with the software on it. And as soon as any known criminal or a person with, uh, that the government had data on, as soon as they used that, uh, they could be flagged and identified, and their location could be found, and something like that. Uh, that seems like a pretty far-fetched idea, and it probably is kind of far off, but it's a cool thing to think about. Um, also, private sector could, do, could use it to, like, for banks, for instance, could use it to restrict certain information to um, only very certified individuals, and it would act like another level of security. So it's kind of like the individual user thing. So they just put it on their computers, only maybe a few select people can do a few select actions, and if their typing pattern didn't match what uh, the typing patterns of the few selected people were, then they would not be allowed to do whatever. So um, it would it would have vulnerabilities, and the thing is, it would have vulnerabilities of both key loggers and from things like gate recognition. So gate recognition can be fooled, um, especially if there's a larger user database, because it would return a lot of false positives. Um, it can usually be fooled by pretty simple things. Uh, for instance, if you're just walking a short distance, doing something simple like putting a couple of rocks into your shoe would fool gate recognition well enough. It would probably return a false positive or maybe just flag you as a completely new user. Um, also things like uh, having a broken ankle would clearly cause you to walk a lot differently or maybe even having uh, like a lack of sleep making you hunched over, more tired, something like that. So gate recognition has to deal with a lot of variables. It works well in controlled settings, but uh, when it's just out in the open and people are like walking and they're either trying to fool it or they just have other stuff going on. It doesn't have as good accuracy. <clears throat> also, there are a lot of privacy issues with gate recognition. Um, people don't like being spied on all the time by cameras, and uh, it seems kind of out of hand to always keep tabs on where everyone is and know uh, where they are. <clears throat> so that's another issue with that. Um, so that that would be that would uh, relate to similar similar vulnerabilities in keystroke dynamics because. If the user was aware that there was a software, then they could, uh, for instance, change their keyboard layout or do something like consciously try and change their typing pattern, and that would make it really hard to identify that. Um, also, this may be identified as a standard keylogger, and if you didn't want that on your computer, you could go about installing it if you found it. Uh, but detection has to be the first step, because if a user doesn't have any idea that something like this is on their computer and they're being logged, like is the case with most key loggers, then they wouldn't have any incentive incentive to try and change their typing pattern. Um, so it seems like a very plausible thing. Uh, it's it's been used very slightly, but as uh, as we 
go on and on. It seems like this will be developed much more, and it may even be perfected and have a lot more use. Thanks. Any questions? Uh, so you're talking about it like uh, gait recognition and it's like somebody has a broken ankle or something. Um, it, so when I was doing my research, this is kind of similar to what you're talking about. So when I was doing my research, I found out that uh, uh, when like the camera spots the person, if they're making like a, like a funny face or something, it, it would like align uh, like the features of the face to be normal and put it into like a normal mugshot or whatever in like 2D. So. I don't know, do you think uh, somehow they could make it to normal and align it to normal? Um, maybe. <laughs> Face recognition definitely has had a lot more research than gait recognition, yeah. so I'm not surprised that they're able to do things like that. Yeah. Um, I think it'd be kind of harder to do that with gait recognition um, because it kind of turns things into ellipses and stuff, and with a face you can kind of see where, like, I don't know, the quarters of your mouth go and you can right, right. bring that back to normal. <laughs> But uh, I'm really not sure if that could be done for game recognition. Probably sometime in the future. So. All right. So, very good. A couple questions about the authentication. So, I think you mentioned that you sort of could do continuous authentication because if somebody's typing change, you know, maybe somebody held a gun to them or they yeah. kicked them off their terminal or they left the terminal uh, uh, you know, open and somebody else was, was, was uh, logged into it. Yeah, definitely. Because it, it's a pain now that system logs you off of the network, you know, if you're idle for 30 seconds or something like that. So, so, so one thing would be is, uh, how can it adapt? So you, you might type differently if, if you send an email to Zach, you know, yeah, who cares? Uh, you, you just type, type randomly away, it doesn't matter what you say to him. As opposed to Mr. Bain, you might be more careful. Yeah, that's, that's so, so, true. So, so the question would be, you know, how might you, what might you do about this to try to avoid um, false, false positives? I'm not sure. That would that's definitely something that needs to be addressed if this software okay. uh, were to be implemented. Okay. Um, I think if you were to do something like continuous logging and because you'd have changes like that, you'd have to do it over a longer period of time, I think. So yeah, um, sure. yeah. it has to be longer, the period uh, from which you record all the keystrokes and use that to authenticate has to be longer than any abnormalities might be. So if it takes like an hour to email Mr. Bain, um, <laughs> then the period would have to be much longer than that, or maybe not much longer. Yeah, right. But it definitely have to be enough to even that out. Okay. Good. Right. Thanks for that.